the artist makes an imagined machine and that imagined machine produces the work. Generative art has a very wide notion. It refers to when there is uh, automation and randomization in the process, in the creation process of a work of art. The underlying principles of generative art are literally based on randomness and the algorithms that allow the artist to interact with the machine. Randomness is a way for the artist to have various possibilities and an array of variations where they can choose from. Generative art has existed for decades and goes back to, I mean, as early as maybe the 50s, you see some people that arguably put forth work that could be considered generative from a technological perspective. And then you go even further back with this idea that generative art might not even require coding, it just requires entropy, it requires randomness. And you have artists that would take uh, randomization coming from something, whether it's the roll of a dice or something, and use that, interpret that into a physical thing that was created. Generative art evolved uh, and, and came up also in visual art and actually as early as when we saw in the early 20th century uh, conceptual artists, actually like Dadaïs with Duchamp, who really put the importance of the artist secondary in the completion of the work. And then it gave some room actually to let either the machine or the randomization to take an important part in the creation process. This is, for example, the, one of the most iconic work by Marcel Duchamp is the Fontaine that is today exhibited in some of the most important museums and seen as one of the key pieces turning point in the history of art. And it, it came from a completely random process and random event. When we talk about milestones in the field of generative art, these go hand in hand with the advancement in technology. I usually like to start in the 1960s, um, sort of the origins of generative art with digital computers. Um, oftentimes the first two names out of people's mouths are Vera Molnar and Manfred Moore, and that, that story. This idea of artists who'd been working in a way with visual systems before they started working with computers, and when they started working with computers that was a way to move their ideas into a new form almost like switching from one medium to another while keeping the ideas consistent. Because at that time in the early 1960s, digital computers were really hard to access. They were mostly in different labs. And so there were a number of engineers and mathematicians who also were pioneers of generative art as well. Uh, people like A. Michael Knoll, people like Frieder Nake. So there's a, a large group as well there. Sort of when personal computers were available, like the Amiga, the Apple II, then these machines for computation, for generative art, were able to go into the artist's studio. And then the number of artists working at that time just exploded. And then again, when the internet became something very public in the mid-1990s, the number of artists working in this way again grew. And then within the last few years, with the availability of making generative art on the web and the collecting around that, it's been another, probably the biggest surge to date. There's definitely been a resurgence of this field in, in recent years. Um, I've been working in, in research and in museums for over 20 years in this particular field and I noticed that while at the very beginning generative art was considered a very niche field of research, it is now acknowledged by larger institutions and by the wider public. It's just been extraordinary to see more opportunities and possibility for artists who are working in this form. 